Happy Valentine's Day and welcome back to my channel. I'm Leslie from Jolie Lee Creations and today you're in the middle of a Heartbreaker Marathon. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, myself along with several other sewists are making the amazing Heartbreaker pattern by K. Ascona Designs. So today we're going to be working on this crossbody version. There is a wristlet version also available. It's a super cute pattern that comes together very quickly. It has a full zip around option that it comes with. Opens up just like the conversation hearts. We have a beautiful zipper overlay that comes with the SVG file. It also comes with several other SVG designs for the front. It's a super cute pattern. And since today is part of the marathon, it's going to be one of my quicker videos. Um, just to kind of get through everything and I know that there's several other people doing the same pattern So I don't need to repeat the thing same things over and over again I just want to give you my tips and tricks on how you can make this super cute bag. So let's get creating First, we want to get started by going over all the pieces that we have. We have our gusset piece, our gusset lining. We have our crossbody strap. We have our exterior front, exterior interior lining. We have our exterior back and our exterior lining. We have our gusset bottom, gusset lining. We have our zipper overlay, zipper, zipper pocket. We'll also need binding. I used one inch cut binding. It is the same waterproof canvas that I used for my lining. We need zipper for our gusset. We need our crossbody strap anchors. These are SVG files that came with the pattern. You can also use regular D-ring connectors or D-ring connector hardware. And then we need our zipper poles. I have three. I'm going to use two zipper poles on the main body and then one for my zipper pocket. I also have an exterior tag and an interior tag to add. I have interfaced the exterior body with Decaville Heavy. I have marked it out of the seam allowances evenly all the way around on the exterior on both sides. I have also cut Decaville Heavy for the base and we will slide that in later. And then I have added a small piece of stabilizer for my D-ring connectors as I didn't feel like it was stable enough with that by itself. So that's all the interfacing that I used for this pattern. The first piece I want to work with is going to be our D-ring connectors. Now we're going to stitch a heart shape on this when we attach it to the bag. So how I found was easiest was I drew a center line from our center points down the middle. That way I know that's going to be the lowest part of my heart. Then I just took my chalk pencil and kind of drew in my heart shape here that I wanted to stitch. And that way I had a line to follow. And that way it's likely to be a little less wonky than if we were just to wing it. Now, the pattern asks for you to use double-sided tape on these, which is completely doable. I just found it a little bit more secure if I went ahead and used glue to adhere these before I started. So we're gonna put our D-ring on. And I'm gonna add a little bit of Fabri-Tac To my one side of the heart. We don't need a lot, it's just really going to keep it from slipping while we top stitch it on. So I'm going to fold these two pieces together. So now we'll just add some clips to hold that glue and let that dry. And then we'll have our chalk line to be able to stitch on easily as well. Now that our 
D-ring attachment pieces have had time to glue, we're going to work with our gusset. I have already added my marks listed in the pattern for the D-ring placement. So I'm going to remove double-sided tape from the back and align that ring with the line that I previously drew from the pattern. I have drawn a center point line from above and below that line so I can line up the center line that I drew on my D-ring tab. And now we need to top stitch this on at an eighth of an inch. I'm going to leave my threads long so I could pull through to the back. I'm just following that curve that I drew. Later on in the video, before we assembled the gusset, I did realize that I wanted to add rivets to my side connectors. So I'm going to move this to the beginning part where we're working on our gusset and tell you to go ahead and add rivets now if you'd like to. It makes it way easier than realizing when I got to the point that I did and how to unstitch the basting seams. So go ahead and add rivets there now if you'd like. Now we're going to line up our zipper along the side of our gusset panel. Because I'm not using a directional print, it does not matter which side it is on, but we do want to make sure that if you're using a directional print, you do it um, according to the pattern as she gives the direction that we need it to go. And now I'm going to baste this zipper, the eighth inch seam allowance, along our gusset piece. Now we're going to take our gusset lining and attach it face down to our zipper and stitch at a 3 8 seam allowance or as close as you can get. I do think for this bag um, it is important that we get kind of close to the zipper. If you can't get all the way um, by using a zipper foot or if you don't have a zipper foot for your machine, I understand. I just think it gives it a little bit nicer finish if we can get close to that tape. I do think mine's probably closer to a quarter of an inch and that seemed to work okay, but it will reduce the zipper visibility once the bag is complete. Now we want to open up our seams, fold back our lining panel, and top stitch at an eighth of an inch down the side of our zipper. Now that we have our gusset top stitched, we need to add our zippers. If you are just adding one, then double check which way you'd like your zipper to open. Since I'm adding two, I'm going to add one to each end. So now we need to take our bottom gusset pieces. We have our exterior and we have our lining we're going to attach them to the end. 
Now if we did a different seam allowance than 3 8 on our zipper, it's going to be a tad off just slightly based on how our seam went. So we're just going to attach that to the one side and our lining face down on the other side. And we're gonna stitch that together at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. If you have any excess zipper, we can cut that off. And now we need to top stitch along our gusset edge. So pull our gusset lining tight, match it up with our gusset exterior. top stitch at an eighth of an inch. Okay, so now that we have our gusset bottom attached, we want to bring the vinyl exterior or your exterior piece only. Leave our lining piece down and we are going to match it up with the other end of our gusset. We're going to line that up, clip it in place, and we're going to baste that together. Now we need to match up our lining right sides together to our lining side. And this can be a little bit tricky. So we can roll this very tight so that this can come around and meet up. I've had some trouble with thicker vinyls not being able to do that. So I've just kind of manipulated my piece around to allow this to be able to come up. So we just need to get these edges of our lining gusset to match up with our other lining gusset. So however you need to do that, so you can roll this tight up like a little burrito, or you can just kind of kick it out to the side. Just really helps with thicker materials there that may be a little bit harder to roll up or we don't want to crease. And now we're going to stitch this together at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Trim off any remaining zipper that we have left over there. And now we want to flip our gusset. So now you should have a completed circle. We very carefully need to press open the seams and we need to top stitch along the other side of our gusset bottom. Before we baste all the way around the exterior and the slip between the lining and the base gusset bottom, we need to add our Decaville Heavy or Peltex into the bottom there. You can just slide it in and when we top stitch that, or when we stitch that, that's going to hold it in place. I do think it could use a little bit sturdier bottom, so I did use some Therafuse that I'm going to add to that. And I also think the 
adhesive will hold that in place as well. So I've just cut it a tad larger than the Decaville Heavy. That way when I slip it in to my exterior, it has adhesive to hold it in place. Carefully slide that in there. Circle. I'm going to baste along the open side of the bottom to keep that closed along the zipper side. And now I want to baste close the other gusset side to our lining. And I'm gonna increase the stitch length probably to about a seven here just because it's so long. All we're doing is holding it together so that when we put the bag together, we um, have a nice tight seam. We also want to make sure that we stay as close to that edge as we can because any stitches that are inside too far may be visible once we assemble our bag together. So now we have our gusset assembled. We're gonna sit that aside. And before we get too far, I want to take my exterior front and I need to add my name tag. So I'm gonna find my center point to my heart and then about two and a half inches up from the bottom. Now my name plate has been added. One thing I do want to note with this pattern is that she has added marks on the template when you first cut out your pieces. Make sure to mark those on your piece. We want to mark them on the front and the back. However, we want to make sure that when you flip them over, these marks on the side line up at the same spot. If not, your bag's gonna come out a little bit wonky. Ask me how I know. The first bag I made, I had a high one on this side and a low one on the back side, and it was a little bit twisted. So we really want to make sure that this low mark here matches up with the low mark on the opposite side of our back piece. High mark on this side, high mark on this side. So that's the most important part when assembling the bag is that when we line up our gusset, those are the marks we're going to use. So make sure if you don't have those marked, mark them now and also go ahead and double check that they match on both sides. My front piece does not have a pocket, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to baste the back lining, the inside lining, to my exterior. And again, we can use our long stitches here as it's just to hold it together and we want to make sure that we're really close to that edge so that it doesn't show in our final assembly. And we can put our front piece aside for now. Now we want to take our back piece and our back piece lining and we're going to work with the lining to attach our zipper pocket. I used my silhouette to cut out the overlay. Please note that if you do cut it out using a cutting machine and you place your vinyl face down to make sure to mirror your pieces. Um, I forgot to mirror mine so my heart is on the wrong side which I figured would be okay for this. So we're going to take our pocket piece and we want to lay our zipper face down up on our pocket and we want to stitch that down at an eighth of an inch.
bring the bottom piece of our pocket up to match our zipper and it's still going to be right side up so you should see the wrong side of your lining. The easiest way to remember that is when you open the zipper you want to see the pretty side. So the exterior will be facing us will be the wrong side. Want to press down our seams of our zipper here. And we want to add a thin strip of double sided tape. We want to keep it out of the visible line of our zipper, so we're going to place it right along the edge. going to add our zipper pull. Make sure you are paying attention to which way you'd like your zipper pull to open. Like mine to open going to the right side. So I'm going to add that on here. And sit that aside. For okay, so now we want to work with our overlay just like we did for our side connectors. I want to take my ruler and I want to find the center line of our heart. So we're going to find the center mark of our heart and we're going to draw a straight line down the center. Then we can slowly mark about an eighth inch down, which will be our pivot point for turning for our heart. So once we stitch around, we can follow the edge to the point and that will be the point where we turn. If you've seen my videos before, I do mark all the corners of my overlays where I'm going to pivot. So how I do that is I use my grid ruler and I'm going to use one box along the top, one box along the side, which marks an eighth inch on both sides, and I put a small dot. That dot's going to be the pivot point for turning. I'm going to do that on all four sides. On darker materials, I can use a chalk pencil. On this one, the chalk pencil doesn't really show up, so I'm just using a regular mechanical pencil that has a sharp point. So now I have pivot points on all four corners that'll really help the precision in turning. We want our pocket to sit about an inch and a half down from the top. We want our overlay to sit an inch and a half down from the top. So using our center mark line, going to go about an inch and a half and just make a quick chalk line. I added some double sided tape to the back of my overlay. So I can peel that off. Now I can use that straight line that I drew to mark to sit my overlay right up against it. And now we need to stitch down our overlay. We're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch around the outside, and then we're going to top stitch our heart down.
Now we need to carefully remove the lining piece from behind the overlay. Just really want to make sure that this entire window is completely open. Once we have that open, we can remove our tape from our zipper pocket. And we can carefully place our overlay on top of our pocket. Once we have our zipper placed, we want to flip up our pocket to the back and we want to top stitch from the point that we made across the bottom to the other point. You can back stitch or you could pull your tails long and we can tie from the back. So our threads are tied, we're going to push our pocket back down. And now we need to finish top stitching around our other three sides. So from our point to point across into the back down to the bottom. Now we need to trim off any excess zipper from the sides of our pocket. And we want to baste up the sides or sew up the sides of our zipper pocket to close that off. Our pocket is going to extend past our interior, so I'm going to scissor that. Now we want to take our exterior back and we want to put it wrong sides together with our exterior. Clip that in place and baste around the exterior of that at an eighth of an inch or as close as you can get to the edge to hold those two pieces together. Now we have our interior with our pocket and our exterior complete and we have our exterior front with our lining attached. So now we're ready to start assembling our bag. What helped me when I assembled my first one is I kind of rolled the edges over my interfacing on the inside and that kind of gave it the shape that it needed um, it also kind of helped work in, work in this center point here that can be a little bit difficult. So it kind of just helps it create a little crease later on. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll that around the interfacing that I have. So 
So working with our exterior back and our gusset, we're working with the side of our gusset that does not have the zipper. We're going to match up the seam of our gusset with our line on the front that we made from our pattern pieces. I'm going to add a clip there and I'm gonna come over, match the other seam with that mark. Now I can ease in this gusset to our point, the bottom here. So I'm just using clips to clip around. this area here. If you need to, we can do small snips in the bottom of our gusset to help ease that in. I'm just gonna work slowly around the exterior, adding clips and lining up our edges for our gusset and our heart. Again, our vinyl sides are going right sides together for our exterior sides. Then once I get to about a few inches away from the top point, I'm going to start back at the other end and work my way back to the top. I'm start rounding the corners, the top of my heart. Now once I have my base shape, I can see if there's any areas that I need to adjust just a little bit. And what I'm really just checking the first time around is for the fit. I want to make sure that everything's fitting nice and tight around the bottom. Once I have it in a good spot, then I can add a few little snips to these areas. I don't like to snip too much before because then if I need to shift it over then I may have snips that are not in the right spot. So I'm just putting a few snips in my gusset where we really need the dip of our heart to meet. That's really going to allow this piece to fold up when we're stitching and not get any wrinkles in this area here. So Country did a video where she added a little bit of glue into the corners and that seemed to help. I didn't have an issue with my first go around. So I think we should be good. I'm just going to add a few snips into the bottom. And they're just very small eighth inch snips. Okay, so seems like we have everything clipped where we want it. make a few snips up here where it's a little bit wrinkly. This 
So now we have our gusset clipped on. We need to baste it on with an eighth inch seam allowance. So as we're going around, I'm going to put it flat down on my machine so that I can keep the edges flat. I'm going to use my awl as I go around and grab this material and kind of, if you stick it just in the top layer of the material a tad, you can push that over to the edge. So anywhere that it's not lining up, we want to make sure that we're really using this to scooch it over to the edge. Okay, so now we have our basting complete. And what I really want to do is I want to double check the edges and see if there's anywhere significantly that is sticking out over the edge. Because when we put the binding on this, we really want it to be nice and smooth. So right here, we can see that the vinyl has pushed up past the lining. So I don't know if you can... Yep, so you can see it right in here. Now we know that this interior piece is the shape that we want. So that it scooched up out here isn't that really that big of a deal, but I need to trim that down because if I don't, when I add my binding, my binding and the seam here is going to follow this bit of vinyl. So having that excess vinyl there, when I stitch it, it's not going to be in the seam allowance that we need. So I'm just going to trim that off to follow along with the lining piece. So now we have a clear view of our point here. So you see how if we would have added the binding there, it would just be higher and now we can follow our seam allowance all the way around the end. So it looks pretty good all the way around the rest of the area. So we can add our binding. And to be honest, I really think that this basting and spending your time making sure your edges line up really make the whole bag. The binding is super easy compared to doing this if you have this lined up right. So now we are going to be working with our binding. A lot of shops are coming out with pre-cut one inch waterproof canvas or webbing options and I really think that's amazing because it's a pain to have to cut down one inch strips. But I have done that um, with this waterproof canvas um, so that it can match my interior. Now the best way that I have found to add binding that works for me every time is I pinch my binding in half to kind of crease it and make a center point. So once I have that crease down the middle, then I can add a strip of half inch double sided tape down the middle. Now if your machine sticks to tape, this may be a little bit tricky for you. So you may want to use glue instead but my machine does just fine with the tape and it has really helped me a ton. Just right down the middle. And the reason why I don't go to the edge is so that when we stitch, it won't pull up around the edge because we're not stitching right along the edge. So if it peels up, it may be sticky. So I just want it in the middle. I don't need it edge to edge. And we're going to start working adding our binding around the edge. I prefer to keep it somewhere below my zipper point so that it doesn't get caught in the zipper. And I'm going to just slightly overlap once I get to the bottom. So now that I have my tape on, I can remove the backing and I'm already going to have 
this peak from the middle point, and that peak is going to lay flush up against our seam. So as we go around, I'm making sure to push this peak down onto the edge of my seam and pinch and add a clip as we go all the way around. And now we have our binding attached. Okay, brought you in a little closer and I changed my presser foot. I changed my presser foot to a wider foot. And I did that because this foot on this side stitches at exactly a quarter of an inch. Since that's our seam allowance for this bag, I find it really easy to do binding this way. So now the key of what I found is when I'm stitching, I'm stitching with the bag either in this direction with the foot underneath, or I can flip it over how I basted it on. And this is the way that I prefer because I can flatten this gusset and I can see this binding. And what I'm really feeling for is the edge of the fabric underneath the binding. I want to make sure that as we go around, this binding is flush up against the fabric underneath. So as you see me stitch around, I'm going to use the edge of my foot to run the edge of the fabric. I'm going to use this to poke down the edge and make sure that the binding didn't slip. If I get to a point that has extra binding and the fabric is in a little bit, then I'm going to run the foot along the edge of the fabric underneath instead of the edge of the binding. This will keep our seam allowance consistent all the way around. If we encounter bumps or wrinkles, the wrinkles do not matter unless they are underneath the foot where you are stitching. If it is on the outside of your foot, if it is on the inside of your foot, if it's before your foot or after, it does not matter. The only wrinkle that matters will be the wrinkle that is underneath the needle at the point you are stitching. The other wrinkles will not stay. So hang tight with me as we go around. You'll see me checking the edge as we go around. So right here, you can see, here's my binding. If I come over, this right here is the edge of my fabric underneath. This binding has nothing underneath it. So I'm going to run my foot along this edge. Ignore the excess, do not run it on the edge. If we were to run it on the edge, or if you're using this along your seam allowance tape, we'll be about an eighth inch off. So we're going to, Kind of move over and just continue on and I can see that as I get closer up here the binding fixes itself so I can just keep on stitching. Again right here my binding has slipped. So I'm going to pivot and I'm going to follow the edge of the fabric.
Now we just need to check, make sure that we didn't run anywhere off of our seams, make sure that it's poked out here. And then I'm going to look on the inside and I want to pull everything back and make sure that I can't see any of my basting stitching, holes, areas that didn't catch, or anything that looks funky. Because while we're here, we can adjust this side much easier. This point here, we really want to check, make sure there's no wrinkles or anything like that. And I think we're good to go. So now we can attach our front piece to our zipper side. So the same way that we did the other side, the same way that we did the other side, we need to line up our gusset bottom seam. A clip. Gusset bottom seam. Clip. And we want to make sure that our points line up here. If we made our markings off, like I talked about in the beginning, your point will be over here and one point will be over here. So we just need to make sure that those are lined up so that our bag is nice and heart shaped. We just wanna continue clipping around the bag until it is completely clipped. And then we can baste it on with an eighth inch seam allowance. This waterproof canvas that I'm using is the Betty Coordinate from Fabric Therapy. I think it provided great structure for this bag and really loved it for the binding as well. Once we complete basting this side, we're going to continue on adding the binding just like we did on the previous side. A majority of the clips I'm using are the glitter clips from Warmino. They are also mixed in with some that I've accumulated over the last year or two from other sources, um, Amazon and different swaps, um, so I'm not sure where they came from. But the pretty glitter ones are from Warmino. Now we just need to attach our binding with a quarter inch seam allowance, just making sure that we stay clear of that zipper and following the edge of our fabric and not just the edge of the binding. Once we've completed stitching around the bag, we need to roll our seams around our zipper edge and then we can carefully turn our bag right side out. If you have trouble turning your bags, whether you're using waterproof canvas, a thicker vinyl, or even the Decaville Heavy, I do recommend using a blow dryer on warm to really heat up the vinyl to loosen it up and make it easier. Now our exterior is complete and we need to make our crossbody strap. We can start by drawing a center line down the middle of our vinyl. I'm making a one inch strap, so my center line is at two inches of my four inch wide cut fabric. Now I'm going to take double sided tape and I'm going to add it down the center on each side of our center line. I want to keep it about an eighth inch away from that center line so we don't top stitch through it. Now we can carefully peel away the backing from our double sided tape and we're going to push the raw edge of our vinyl to that center line. Leave a small gap just between the two sides so that it gives it a little bit room to fold. Now we're going to do the same for the other side, matching up the other raw edge 
to just on the other side of that center line. Now I'm going to take another side of double sided tape and add it to one half of our strap. We can carefully peel back the backing and we're going to pinch the two folded edges together to make our one inch strap. Readjust as you need as you go down so that the edges line up perfectly. Now I'm going to top stitch down both sides of our strap using an eighth inch seam allowance. When top stitching, I'm using a stitch length of about a four or a five. It's really dependent on the material that you're using and the style that you like. This glitter vinyl is from Glitterbug Fairy, a small business that I met at So Magical last year. Once our top stitching is complete, we need to attach our strap hardware. I'm going to start by using my strap rivet guide to mark the holes that are needed for our slide adjuster. I'm going to mark holes A and C and punch them out with my can snap press. Attach the slider and add my rivets. I do need to change from my punch die to my rivet dies so that I can secure my rivets. I'm going to take the opposite end, add my swivel hook, and thread my strap through my slide adjuster. And now we can work with the other end. Slide on our other swivel hook and attach our strap end. If you're not using a strap end, you can just skip to the next part. Once our strap end is on, we're going to take our strap guide again and we're going to mark holes B and C, reattach our punch die on our cam snap press, and punch those two holes. Switch back to our rivet dies, slide up our swivel hook, add our rivet to the hole, secure with our rivet press, and our strap and bag is complete. Thank you so much for spending Valentine's Day with me and sewing up this heartbreaker pattern. I hope that you go and make one yourself. If you have any questions about the pattern or sewing in general, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll be sure to get back with you and answer any questions that you may have. If you're interested in any of the products that I used in my video today, I'll put them in the description below, so be sure you check that out. I'd love to see all your makes and creations, so please join me on Facebook, Creating with Joe Lely, and I'll see you there. Thanks. Hey, are you still there? I completely forgot to tell you. This bag glows in the dark. How cool is that?